Hey, what's up guys? It's R. Malieri. I'm back with a brand new video for you today. We have the Otherworld Computing Data Doubler Solid State Drive and RAM Memory Upgrade Kit. Uh, I'm going to be showing you how to put a second hard drive in place of your DVD-ROM uh, in your MacBook Pro and upgrade it with solid state and make it super fast and uh, maximum uh, RAM upgrade as well so you can have a super fast hard drive, total uh, RAM uh, speed increase and uh, all around faster MacBook Pro. This is a 2009 MacBook Pro but with the upgrades that I'm going to make it's going to feel more like uh, even faster than a 2011. Um, so you guys stay tuned, I have a pretty awesome video coming up for you. Alright guys, so you can see uh, I have some things here. Of course I have the 13 inch MacBook Pro. I have the toolkit that was sent along by Otherworld Computing. Uh, 8 gigabytes of uh, 1033 megahertz RAM uh, for the 2009 uh, MacBook Pro. I have a 30 gigabyte uh, solid state hard drive from Otherworld Computing. This is the 3G Mercury, Mercury Electra solid state drive. You can see that bad boy there. And in the box we have the uh, Otherworld Computing Data Doubler. Now what this guy does is it fits in the um, the slot for your um, disk drive. Uh, you can see it's shaped like the disk drive. And what you do is you would just go ahead and uh, take your solid state drive, put it in here, and then pop it in where your uh, uh, DVD drive would have been and, and uh, kind of pop out your DVD drive. So um, with, with the use of uh, flash memory and uh, apps being all downloadable these days, I don't really... Think I'm going to need the DVD drive, but if I do, I did buy uh, an external enclosure as well, so I can pop that in. It's really slim, it's bus powered, and uh, I will review that for you in another video. So stay tuned for that. But uh, basically, what we're going to do is go ahead and uh, pop out the DVD drive and put the solid state drive and upgrade the RAM. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, get to the first step. All right, guys. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and. Uh, start taking off the bottom panel of the MacBook Pro. Uh, there were some tools that were sent along here by uh, Otherworld Computing along with the Data Doubler Kit, uh, which is pretty cool because I, I needed tools like this and it's going to come pretty handy. It looks like there's uh, what I like to call a case opener tool. This guy's pretty handy if you're going to be working on electronics, popping tabs. Uh, you can even use it to open smartphones and stuff like that. So this is really good. I needed one of these. And what else did I get? In the bag, I also got a looks like a Torx. Um, it's one of those kind of star shaped ones. So that's pretty neat. Also have uh, three other little uh, tools in here. This looks like a tiny little flathead. Um, and here we have a bigger Torx screwdriver. It's kind of like a another star one. And uh, hopefully this is a Phillips. Yep, it is. This is the tiny Phillips that I'm going to need to take off the screws. So this is going to be my main tool for this video as the bottom of the MacBook Pro uh, should be uh, using Phillips screws. So we're going to go ahead and flip it around. And uh, you're going to be able to see a whole bunch of screws going along the uh, side of the MacBook Pro. Now these three on the, um, the top right are longer than the rest. So make sure you keep them in a separate pile when you're taking them apart. So basically we're going to put this down and we're going to start taking off all of these screws. Alright guys, so we took all of the screws off of the back of the MacBook Pro and we're going to go ahead and just pop the lid off of the back of it here. I'm going to use this little case opener tool to give me some uh, some sort of grab with it. And you can see I just run it along the side and uh, it helps me lift it up just like that. So there we are, it should just pop right off. Oh, yeah, maybe if I took that last screw off it would. I'll go ahead and remove the screw that I missed. 
put that to the side. And um, yeah, there we go. There is the bottom of the MacBook Pro. You can see it's pretty easy to take apart. There's a little vents uh, back there. And there is the bottom of a unibody MacBook Pro 2009. Uh, looks like it's kind of dirty, so it'll be nice to uh, wipe this bad boy off. And here you have the inside of the MacBook Pro. Over here we have the primary hard drive. This is the uh, battery. This is where the RAM memory is. Here is the disk drive that we'll be removing. And then you have the logic board and the fan there, along with the speakers. So uh, first thing you're going to want to do is pop off the, um, the cable going to the disk drive. You can see the serial ATA cable right here. Let me see if I can lean it up a little bit more so you can get a better view of it. In fact, I'll just bring it closer. So you can kind of see here, this is the cable coming from the disk drive and we're just going to pop it off right here. There's a little um, uh, cable here you can just pop right off. Just go underneath it and pull it up, and it pops right off. And then there's another one right here that we're going to want to pop. Um, so you just again just go under, flip the tab, and they're off. So the two serial ATA cables are now off. And then from there, there's a little cable here that you're going to want to move back out of the way um, because there is a little screw in that hole right there that you're going to want to remove and then from there you can go ahead and remove the screws um, there's one there there's one there and the third one in there so you're going to get a total of four screws one two three and the fourth one inside of there and then you should be able to take that drive right up so we're going to go ahead and get to that guys So now that we have that off, um, what we can do is just lift this up right here, and we can see that it'll, it'll lift right up here. You just want to peel this back, and it should lift right on out. And voila, there we have the disk drive. Um, it's popped out of the MacBook Pro. Not too scary, so it was like that and just popped right out. And there's a little SATA connector right here, and we're going to want to take that off along with this uh, bracket here. We're going to need that to install the uh, data doubler. So, what you can do is get this off by just wiggling it off like that. It comes right off. It's a little SATA connection for the back. And then we're going to go ahead and take off these two screws. And uh, there she be. So I have a pretty cool external uh, uh, actual enclosure for this that I'm going to use for um, an external DVD drive. And I'll show you guys that real quick. We're going to place it in the uh, OWC Value Line Super Slim uh, external case. So it'll go in here and it's totally powered off a USB bus. So we don't need any kind of power connectors for this. So I'll show you guys this in another um upcoming video so let's continue with the data doubler install so um, here we are again guys this is the data doubler right here that we're going to use you can see that it's shaped like the um, like the disk drive that we've removed I'm going to go ahead and um, put that over here and also inside there's going to be a couple of screws they're a little bit longer than the ones that uh, came off of the drive because of the added uh, thickness of the data doubler, we're going to want to use these two screws um, on the sides here. So let's go ahead and remove the data doubler from the case. There we have it. Um, 
So what we're going to do, you can see there's a couple of holes inside here uh, that are going to hold the drive. There's a couple of holes there and there that are going to hold the uh, solid state drive on. So let's go ahead and get that uh, pulled out. Here is the um, 32 or the 30 gigabyte solid state drive. This is going to be uber fast compared to uh, what I'm using. So I'm just going to go ahead and pop that open and pull it out. Now you can see it's going to be my second hard drive because I got one here. That this is a nice thing about this whole upgrade is that you know you can have uh, a, a very fast boot drive and uh, uh, a nice size one for a secondary. So what we're going to want to do here is line these guys up like so and just pop in our drive like that so I'm just coming in from the bottom guys I, th I think that's the best way to install it just hold it upside down like that come in and line up your pins from the bottom you can see them better and just push it in and it'll just It'll just pop right in right there. Now you're going to want to secure it with these two screws right here. All right, guys. So uh, once you got your data doubler uh, loaded with your solid state drive, you're going to be looking for a uh, package of screws, which is going to have a thicker uh, set of screws in it. Uh, these uh, guys right here. They're really, really thick. It's hard to see in this bag, but I'm going to take them out so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, they're made bigger and thicker so that they can uh, they can hold the uh, solid state drive onto the data doubler because it has some pretty thick holes on the side of the data doubler that won't fit any of the screws that come out of your MacBook Pro. So you're really going to want these big, thick screws to uh, mount your data doubler on. Um, so there you can see. Uh, it's very, very big and thick compared to some of these little guys that are coming out of your MacBook. So there it is for comparison. You can see the size difference. It's going to be pretty big. So we're just going to grab the data doubler and pop this guy in right into the hole. There we are. Got one there. And I'm going to go ahead and pop the other one into the side. Go ahead and screw that down. That is the assembled data doubler, guys. It's sturdy, it's secure, it's not going anywhere. It's got the two, um, two screws in. And what we're gonna do next is we're gonna go ahead and add the, um, the bracket that we took off of our disk drive right here. So go ahead and do that next. All right, guys, so I went ahead and I attached the, um, the SATA cables there, but there's one screw that you can see behind this little tab right here uh, where I mounted the, uh, the bracket that we took off. And I'm going to have to go ahead and use the same screw that came off from that spot in there. So I'm going to go ahead and pop that guy on my screwdriver and just pull this back, line it up with the hole. And you might have to jiggle it a little bit so it lines up. And just screw it back down. All right, so don't go too far because you have to line up the other ones. So I just kind of got it in there and I'm um, going to go ahead and pop in one of the longer screws that came with the data doubler in this bottom left corner. Uh, apparently they want me to use a long screw there. So you can see I got one of the long ones. I'll pop that into this side because of the length of the um, the data doubler. Alright guys, so for the one on the top left, it says to use one of the small screws that it came with. Uh, so it's pretty straightforward. There's two sizes. And so I'm going to use the small one up in this top left. So apparently it doesn't need quite as long as a clearance. So Yep, that works perfect. So the original screw that the bracket came with is holding the bracket in place. I'm going to go ahead and tighten it all down now that it's lined up properly. So 
being careful not to strip anything because these are tiny screws and you don't want anything to be stripped for next time. So it's as tight as it's going to get guys. All three of these screws are in place. So now I can go ahead and push the cabling back down to where it needs to go. Um, see it just kind of tucks itself in there somehow. And SATA cables are down, battery tab is in place. And my data doubler install is complete, guys. That was the data doubler install. So next we're going to move on to uh, exchanging the RAM modules, which I have right here. So stay tuned for that.